Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about an introduction into economics and you can just pull out any textbook and we will you'll be able to follow along because this will be a general introduction into economics. So for economics, what is important is this idea of scarcity. So scarcity means that you have a limited number of resources but your needs and wants are too much for these resources to satisfy them. And economics will then be the study of how do you, under this scarcity, your resources is not enough, so how do you choose what you want to produce? And when making this decision, it requires comparing the cost and benefits of the alternative choices. And so, the idea of these alternative choices leads to opportunity cost. So, the opportunity cost is whatever we must give up when we make our choice. For example, you can produce apple or orange. Then, if you choose to produce apple, then you'll miss out on oranges. So, opportunity cost can be split up into either the monetary sacrifice or the non-monetary sacrifice. For example, when you have apple and orange, the monetary sacrifice, how much does it cost to produce an apple and the time taken it produces an apple. And when the alternatives are mutually exclusive, then the implicit cost becomes the value of the next best alternative. So the opportunity cost can be stated as explicit cost plus implicit clause. And you can only add them up when the implicit clause is mutually exclusive to any other exclusive ex to any is mutually exclusive to any other cause so that it prevents double counting. So you, you just need to remember that you cannot double count your cause. And an action can only be taken if and only if the benefit is greater or the same as the cost. The next idea we want to go through is the production possibility frontier and for the pro production and for the production possibilities frontier known as PPF, it is basically a graph to show all combinations of two goods that can be produced in your economy at this point of time because of the given resources and technology. For example, corn and wheat. You can draw your graph in this manner because if you produce more less more wheat, then the amount of corn you produce will be less. So it will slope downward. It will be decreasing. And the reason why it concaves is because the resources to produce corn will now be shifted to produce wheat but it may not be the same, it may not be as effective in producing wheat. So it is concaving downwards. And then we can ask ourselves, what does the point on the graph mean? Well, it means that these are possible combinations for the two goods and are efficient because you use all the technology and resource. Areas underneath means you don't produce the maximum output. So it is possible but not efficient. And areas ab outside the PPF is not possible. So the slope of a PPF indicates the opportunity cost of good X in terms of good Y. Now, we can actually... Sh so we know how we're going to shift along the PPF. We just need to shift resources from producing corn to producing wheat. But when there's economic growth, it allows us to shift our PPF outwards. Because now, we have more resources. Means we can produce more corn and more wheat at the same time. Another way for economic growth is improved technologies. Making it more cost efficient. So again, you can push out. So for the same amount of resource, you can also produce more. 
So as long as economic growth, it shifts the PPF outwards. The next idea that we need to know is what is known as specialization and exchange. Some textbooks might say that exchange is just trade. So basically, you trade with another company, you trade with another country. So specialization in trade will allow us to enjoy greater production and higher living standards than what is possible. So what, some reasons for why specialization in trade allows the economies to produce more well is due to human capabilities. You can only learn so much in your lifetime. So if some other people are specializing in a certain field, then we call them to have comparative advantage. We will take a look into that about comparative advantage later. So that's one of the reasons. And the second reason is when from specialization result, the time needed to switch from one activity to another reduces. This all everything just makes us be able to be more efficient which then allow or drives economic growth which allows economies now to produce outside their own PPF. So basically you your PPF is like that. You're producing here by speci by specializing maybe you go more here and trading. Then from here you're able to shift out to here or up here. So Look at this table, and what do we see? Well, we see that for Mar Marianne and Gillian, one berry takes one hour to produce, and one fish takes one hour to produce. For Gillian, one berry takes one and a half hour to produce, and one fish takes three hours to produce. When this happens, an individual is said to have absolute advantage. So, in this case, Marion has absolute advantage because to produce both berries and fish, she only needs one hour for each thing, each, each task. So, she can produce them with fewer resources than the next individual. In this case, the resource is time. So, because she can produce both of these better with less time, she is said to have an absolute advantage. So, in both of these uh, commodities, but now the idea is if absolute advantage is the criterion for assigning work, then Marion will do everything, and then Gillian doesn't need to do everything, anything at all. So this is not to both people's best interests. So, we cannot use absolute advantage as a way of allocating tasks to different workers. Instead, now it comes in with what is known as comparative advantage. So, a person has comparative advantage if producing some good with a smaller opportunity cost than the other person. For example, we look back at this case about Marian and Gillian, we instead of comparing the time, we compare the opportunity cost. So, one hour, since berries take one hour and fish take one hour, meaning one berry is like equal to one fish, the time taken. So, one berry, one fish. For Gillian, it is actually half a fish. And for one fish, Marian is one berry. And for Jillian, it's two berries. As we can see now, Mary takes up less resources to produce the same fish as compared to Jillian. And Jillian takes up less of the other quantity, other good compared to Marion, which takes up one fish. So in this case, we can actually say that Marion, Jillian has more than make up for the berries that Marion isn't picking. 
So in this case, we say that Marion has a comparative advantage in producing fish, while Julia has a comparative advantage in producing berries. And so, we can assign Marion to produce the fish and Julian to produce the berries. And by doing so, by assigning this work, this is known as the specialization part, and the total production will be the greatest with individual special specialized according to their comparative advantage. And then you just trade afterwards to have uh to gain more goods for both parties. So this is the introduction into economics. And later on, we will talk more about how the intricacy work in, in the market using supply and demand models. I hope you have a great time. I hope you stay for the next video. And please like, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you another time. Bye.